Well, welcome friends and welcome back to this episode of YMC Cast. As always, it's absolutely excellent to be with you this week. I hope you've had a, a very lovely uh, bank holiday uh, and I hope you've been really enjoying the sunshine. It's been uh, very lovely to be getting uh, out and about in this lovely uh, sunny weather as of late. As always with uh, YMC Cast, we start in prayer. Lord, thank you that you continue to pour out your word onto us, that you do not leave us, that you have not abandoned us. You continue to pour your Holy Spirit onto us. May we be filled with that spirit today. May we be people that live for you. Amen. And so we start this week as we continue our series of biblical characters through the alphabet. And this week we have K and E. L. So I hope you're having a bit of a think. Who could you potentially have for K and L and your uh, alphabetical Bible character as well? Kirsty's going to tell you. My main memories of sleepovers as a teenager was getting to stay up all night and just talk so openly and honestly with my friends who I was so close to. And there was something a bit different about um, sleeping over because you could whisper together and there was no activities, nothing to interrupt that flow of conversation. And we could talk about anything and everything. But with a group of my friends, the conversation always seemed to turn back to boys. Men, I don't know if it was the same for you on a boy sleepover, but pretty soon somebody would say, so who do you fancy? That annoying question because they would never accept nobody as an answer. Well, the reason I thought I would bring all of that back up is because the letter K, I've decided to go with a character that I came across um, a few years ago. I, I decided that what I really wanted to do was to read the Bible from cover to cover. Um, I've often read books of the Bible, but I've never actually managed to be faithful enough to just read it the entire way through. Well, I started off really well and I got as far as Genesis chapter 25, and that's when it all fell apart. Because if you haven't read it, I have got some gossip for you. Um, Abraham got married again. I, nobody ever taught me that. That was not in any of my Sunday school lessons. And I don't think I ever remember hearing a sermon on this random lady um, that Abraham had married again. Um, so just to make sure everybody's on the same page, Abraham is the man right at the beginning of the Old Testament, really, who Jesus, who God makes a covenant with and says to him, look, I'll be your God, you'll be my people, I have got an inheritance for you, um, just obey my laws, circumcise your children, follow me, um, and, and I will be with you. And, and God makes lots of promises about being with him on earth and in, in heaven later on. And Abraham and God are pretty close. And Abraham's wife, Sarah, who was very elderly he told her that she was going to have a child even though she'd never had a child and she was in her 90s um and Sarah didn't believe so Sarah gave Abraham her maid servant her maid servant Hagar so Abraham had a son with Hagar called Ishmael and then a son with um Sarah called Isaac so all of that happens no mention of Keturah uh the entire life of Abraham happens in the Bible and then you get to Genesis chapter 25 and it's titled the death of Abraham and it starts, Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. <laughs> I mean, that is a massive bombshell just to drop at the end of Abraham's life. And it turns out that she had had six sons with Abraham, uh, Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. So obviously you've got the, Me the Medes and the Midianites later on, who the Israelites are always fighting with. And like, this is where it all started. Um, it turns out that only Isaac and Ishmael were really in charge of the funeral. And there's only one other place in the whole Bible where Keturah is even mentioned. And that is in um, 1 Chronicles 1. And in 1 Chronicles 1, it's got a list of everybody in the family of Abraham. I'm going to read this to you just so you can see how ridiculous this is. So the family of Abraham, the sons of Abraham are Isaac and Ishmael. Then it goes on, the descendants of Hagar and then descendants of Keturah. The sons born to Keturah, Abraham's concubine. And the list of Keturah's sons are not, are not listed as the sons of Abraham, despite the fact that she was Abraham's concubine and bore him these sons. I think that seems really unfair, to be honest. So why on earth have I chosen to talk to you about this random lady, Keturah? <laughs> well, it occurred to me that... 
there are quite a few members in our congregations and in our communities and in our schools and there's quite a few people around us whose family life doesn't fit the traditional Christian family life, who maybe have had multiple marriages, who've maybe had children outside of marriage, who maybe have a family situation that that isn't easily labelled. And sometimes that is the biggest thing we see in a person's life. It's the thing that we draw the most attention to. And what I think is quite interesting about this is Abraham is this huge character in Judaism, in Islam and in Christianity. He is the person who, um, after the Garden of Eden, first sets up that, that main promise and covenant with God. And there's this whole part of his life that is barely mentioned. And it made me think, I wonder how much emphasis we put um when we see somebody on their current sort of circumstances, rather than seeing what it is that they're working towards for God. You know, there's quite a few famous characters through history who have done incredible things. One of the people who stands out to me is Nelson Mandela. You know, he did, I'm sure Felicity will be able to correct me on a lot of my facts about Nelson Mandela, but, um, you know, he was he stood against apartheid and united a country that had been so fragmented. But his home life was a mess. And I wonder if we judge each other more on the home life aspects, the, the bits that we don't get quite right. And and sometimes it means that we don't see the power of God working in that person in the faces of really big injustice or oppression or a love for other people that that shines through those circumstances it's good if your home life can be stable it's good if um if you can emulate that relationship that that i think god wants us to have where we can commit to somebody and we can be faithful to them and um we can provide a, a stable home for our family but if that isn't your circumstances I don't think that means that you are not an incredible, powerful warrior of God, able to change the world around you, able to be a leader um, in the community and able to, to make the world better. So that is our um, <laughs> sleepover gossip for today. Um, I hope that was a, a slightly different take on a character of the Bible. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to come across random characters of the Bible, starting to read it is amazing because things jump out that nobody will ever mention. So that was Katura, and um, I'll pray for us before I finish. God, it seems bizarre that Abraham, who had such a life of promise, who saw so many um, miracles come true, may not have been content, Lord, with what you had promised him. And it seems unfair for Keturah, wife of such a powerful man, to be almost forgotten, denoted as a concubine, and not given much importance. Lord, I, I pray for, for the people in our congregation who are in broken relationships. I pray for the hurt and the pain that comes from those relationships, Lord, that you would heal that pain, heal that hurt. And for those people in relationships that they need to get out of, we just pray that they would have the courage to do it. And Lord, where, where there are people whose backgrounds, whose circumstances have not been the traditional ones, I just pray, Lord, that that, that part of their identity wouldn't cloud their ability to follow you, to live for you, and to make incredible changes in the world for you. Help us, Lord, to be slow to judge and quick to see the good in other people. Amen. We are on to the letter L, um, and today we're looking at L is for Lamech. Um, I wonder how many names in the Bible you know without knowing very much about them. You might know one or two facts. I find that all the time. Somebody will say a name to me and I know that I've read it somewhere. And I know that I should know a story and, and I don't. I don't really know very much about them at all or I've got them mixed up. 
There's quite a few characters from Genesis that are a bit like that, where actually even in the Bible, there's very little about them, but they're names that we'll recognise. So there's the name Enoch, and Enoch um, walked very closely with God, and he's the only person in the Bible who I think um, who didn't ever die, except for maybe Elijah, who, um, and it, it says that he, he was no more because God took him away. We don't know how he, he got taken away, but it makes it sound like he didn't die. He was just taken to be with God because he was such a good man. And you might recognise the name of his son. His, the Enoch's son's name is Methuselah. And Methuselah lived 969 years. And he's known as the longest lived person in the Bible. Well, Methuselah had a son. And Methuselah's son is Lamech. And there's only one fact that we really know about Lamech. And that is... The name of his son, which is Noah, as of Noah's Ark. So the only thing we really know about Lamech is he had a son called Noah um, and he hoped that he would uh, be a comfort in the labour and painful toil of working in the land that was cursed by God, having come out of the, Ard of the Garden of Eden. Um, of course, we know a lot more about Noah, um, which is why we probably don't ever hear anybody talk about Lamech at all. The only reason I've chosen Lamech is because I knew a father called Lamech in Malawi. Um, Lamech and his wife Zioni were oh, well, ah, lovely people. They um, had, well, he was a pastor in a village um, at, down in Sanjay in, in South Malawi, in one of the poorest areas of the country. And I didn't know him at that point, um, but I've heard stories about him. And it seems that he was a man of incredible compassion and love for the people around him. One of the stories that was told to me um, was that uh, he had been living in a house that was not suitable um, for him and his family. And so the Canadian missionaries who were working nearby um, gave them some money to go and build a house that would be far more suitable. They were, they were very hospitable people and, and it would work a lot better for them to have a brick house instead of the, the sort of house that they had. Um, and rather than build themselves a house, they took the money and spent it on school fees for every child in their village. What an incredible show of love and compassion for all of those children. I knew Lamech because he and his wife moved into um, the children's homes, uh, the Irish children's homes in South in in Malawi, and what they have is um, homes where a couple look after maybe up to twelve children in a house, and um, a couple have all boys, and opposite is a house for girls with just a single mum in case the girls have um, suffered from abuse. So they've got a father figure who's connected to the house, but but they're safe. And Lamech and Zioni moved with their they took their family out of their village, um, out of what they knew, and they committed to be parents to these children who were brought by the social services, the National Social Services found children who maybe had lost their parents or maybe were just suffering from abuse or weren't getting the care they needed. Um, and they were brought in, and Namach and Zioni have been there ever since parenting these children. Now I knew, I was told which children were Lamech and Zionis, um, and they stood out because they were incredibly intelligent. <laughs> um, but actually, it would be hard pressed if you weren't helping in the school to know who was and who wasn't their biological child. Because the care and the love that was shown to these children by Lamech and Zioni was incredible. You know, they were committed to them, not just on a rotor basis or for a short time, they were committed to them for the entirety of their lives, for as long as they needed them, Lamech and Zioni were committed to being their parents. And it made me think about the importance of parenting. Now in the Bible, I don't know what sort of parent Lamech was. I don't know whether he had that same heart of compassion and love and faithfulness that my friend Lamech has. But it sounds like he probably did. Because you look at the fruit, you know, Lamech and Zioni are going to spend their lives in a small rural part of Malawi. They're both very intelligent people and probably could have got jobs in the city and made more money and lived a more comfortable life.
but actually they're spending their time investing and in, and inspiring these children that they've taken on board in order to give them an opportunity. They're paying school fees for children so that they can get through high school, which is a rare thing to be able to do because it costs so much in Malawi. They are making sacrifices to help the next generation. Lamech in the Bible, his son Noah, as it we know the story, um, was the only person who trusted God when God said a flood is coming. The only person willing to put it all on the line, to cut down that wood and, and make that boat and gather the animals and put his, his family on that boat in order to trust in God. And I wonder how much of that was down to the, the information and the faith that he witnessed in his dad. And it makes me wonder, what effect can I have on others? I wonder what people see when they see my life. Whether it's one that inspires people to trust God. Whether I'll have any real, make any real difference in the next generation. I hope so. I hope you think, hope I do too, as you're employing me to be your family's worker. <laughs> you know, sometimes um, it feels like in our lives, there's not been one great legacy that we've left, but the legacies that we've left in the people around us can be huge. And we might not get to see the effect and we might never see the full fruits of what has happened. But if we are faithful to God and we, and we live the way that he wants us to, showing love to each other, being faithful to each other, showing compassion for others, I believe that that has an effect and I believe that that does sort of change the world for the next generation. So although there's not very much information about Lamech in the Bible, he's still somebody that inspires me, but mainly through my friend Lamech, to think about what I'm leaving, what my legacy is going to be for the next generation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that each generation doesn't have to start totally afresh building up a knowledge of who you are and how to live. Thank you that um, we can communicate and share our experiences and share our knowledge of you. Lord, I just want to pray for the families and friends that are represented by each one of us. Lord, I pray for our relationship with them, that each of us would be a positive influence and a positive witness in their lives. I pray that you would grow those, those seeds of, of faith and love that have been sown. And we take this moment, Lord, to thank you for those who've come before us, for the teaching that we've received, for the love that we've received and the help that we've received. And we thank you most that you are a good father, that your influence, Lord, is beyond all else, that you are with us every day, helping us as we try to live for you. Amen. Thank you very much, Kirsty, for that. It's always exciting to be able to hear and listen about Bible characters that perhaps we may not have come across before. And so we're sticking with the uh, the Bible and the first in a, a very mini series for us on YMC Cast, looking at three particular books in the Bible that perhaps we may not uh, delve into very much, that we may not very much know an awful lot about. So we're going to first learn about the Book of Proverbs. There are three books in the Bible that have come to be called the wisdom literature, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. And all of these books are addressing the same set of questions. What kind of world are we living in? And what does it look like to live well in this world? So how to be good at life? Yeah. So each of these books tackles these questions from a unique perspective, and it's important to understand all of them to get a fully biblical perspective on the good life. So as a thought experiment, you could actually imagine each of these books as a person. So Proverbs would be like this brilliant young teacher, and Ecclesiastes is the sharp middle-aged critic, and Job would be this weathered old man who's seen a lot in his day. We're going to start by meeting the book of Proverbs, the brilliant young teacher. And she's not just smart, she's smart about everything, work, relationships, sex, spirituality. She has incredible insights. 
things you wouldn't see on your own. Yeah, she would be the perfect friend to have around when you need really specific advice. So what makes her so smart? Well, Proverbs can see things that most people don't see. She believes that there's an invisible creative force in the universe that can guide people in how they should live. And you can't see it, just like you can't see gravity, but it affects everything that we do. So what's this force? Well, in Hebrew, it's called chokhmah, and it usually gets translated into English as wisdom. It's an attribute of God that God used to create the world. And chokhmah has been woven into the fabric of things and how they work. So wherever people are making good or just or wise decisions, they're tapping into chokhmah. And whenever someone's making a bad decision, they're working against chokhmah. Right, or as it says in Proverbs chapter 1, the waywardness of fools will destroy them, but the one who listens to wisdom lives in security. So it's like a moral law of the universe. Yeah, it's a cause-effect pattern, and no one can escape it. And Proverbs personifies all of this as a woman. Yeah, Lady Wisdom. Right, and she roams around the earth calling out, making herself available to anyone who's willing to listen to her and to learn. Which leads to the second thing Proverbs believes, that anyone can access and interact with wisdom and use it to make a beautiful life for yourself or for others. You can create with it like a designer. Yes, in fact, chokhmah in Hebrew isn't simply intellectual knowledge. The word is also used to describe a skilled artisan who excels at their craft, like woodworking or stonemasonry. So you show you possess chokhmah when you put it to work and develop the skill of making a good life. Okay, that makes sense. So let's do this. Let's go find some wisdom. But before you do, Proverbs has one more really important thing to consider. Chokhmah isn't some impersonal force. It's an attribute of God himself. And so in Hebrew thought, your journey to becoming wise has to begin with what Proverbs calls the fear of the Lord. It's this healthy respect for God's definition of good and evil. And true wisdom means learning those boundary lines and not crossing them. Now, all those ideas you just unpacked are in chapters 1 through 9 in Proverbs. But when I think of the book of Proverbs, I think of the collection of sayings, the Proverbs themselves. Tell me about those. Yeah, those are what you find in chapters 10 on to the end of the book. It's a collection of hundreds and hundreds of Proverbs about any and all aspects of life. And chokhmah gets applied to them, resulting in this wise guidance to help you find a path towards success and no matter what you do. If I design my life with these sayings, life is gonna be good. Yeah, or as Proverbs puts it, it'll give health to your bones, prosperity, a long, rich life. Which is a really big claim. But you can see how it's often the case. Wise people, they tend to do better. Things usually work out well for them in life. And so that is the promise and the wisdom of the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is really beautiful. But if we take a step back, some people would argue it's a little too simplistic. Because sometimes horrible things happen to really wise people, and sometimes oh. foolish people get rewarded. It doesn't always work the way we think it should work. That's right. Which is why we need to go and listen to our next wise friend, Ecclesiastes the Critic. Because he's wrestled with that very problem, and he's going to push us further in our journey to find the good life. Hey, you guys. Thank you for watching The Bible Project. You can find a lot more videos like this one on our YouTube channel. We believe the Bible is a unified story. It all leads to Jesus and has profound wisdom for the modern world. Uh, so we're making videos about key themes that run throughout the whole storyline of the Bible. We also make videos that unpack different books of the Bible, looking at its literary structure, the themes of that book, mm -hmm. kind of like the one you just watched on Proverbs. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot more videos to do and a few more series that we want to do as well. Uh, the Bible Project, it is totally supported by you guys, and thank you so much for all that you're doing. Uh, we want to make this whole video library available for free to anyone, anywhere, and uh, that's because of you guys giving one-time gifts, or you can sign up to become uh, a monthly supporter as well. On our website, you could download full resolution videos, you could download posters and study guides and other things. It's all for free on jointhebibleproject.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for that. So uh, as you're probably going to be working out, we've heard about four herbs. We're going to then hear about Ecclesiastes and then we're going to hear about Job. So I hope you're looking forward to continuing that series. But I think that's really interesting and in getting to learn about uh, different books of the, uh, the Bible that we may not go uh, very deep into occasionally.
So that's all that we have time for on this week's YMCcast. As always, please do get in contact with me using the hashtag YMCcast or emailing me at Michael YMC Worker. It's always excellent to hear from you. So I hope you have a really, really good week and cheerio.